know triple negative breast cancers are the more aggressive cancers and we know they present much more in an advanced stage uh we know stage by stage triple negatives always have a poor prognosis we talk to our patients in the adjuvant therapy that they relapse much more faster and in the first 2 to 3 years we see relapses and that's why we try to treat them more aggressively but by nature and by stage by survival is always poorer for triple negatives compared to other breast cancers next please this is what i was mentioning you have seen the overall survival in in various stages and it's always poorer in the triple negative segment compared to the other segments next please so there's a very big unmet need for the management of metastatic triple negative breast cancer we kind of believe the survival has always been to the tune of one year one and a half years and we have only various chemotherapies which have been used in different lines of therapies we have used taxanes we have used anthras we have used capsitabine we have used combinations with platins and gemcitabine uh, but but there is a big unmet need for targeted therapies or immunotherapies in uh, for as therapeutic options in triple negative breast cancer next please so next please next please so 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 uh, you can have this slide just a minute sorry just a minute yeah so 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 there was always a thought that immunotherapy will work in the segment of triple negative breast cancers and the reason for this was always because we had a biological understanding of triple negative breast cancers so it was seen that in triple negative can breast cancers we have a high presence of mutations and if there is more mutations there is more new antigens and if there is more new antigens the immune system may become active secondly there were more expression of pdl1 in the triple negative populations and we have seen this from the tcg atlas also there is high pdl1 in triple negatives compared to the other breast groups and we know if the pdl1 is higher there is there is there is a chance that by inhibiting the pdl1 here you will get a better response and also there were studies which showed there is a higher t cell infiltration in the triple negative population compared to the other breast cancer subtypes so clearly it is the presence of all these factors which kind of mean make triple negatives much more immunogenic and much more uh, responsive to immunotherapy next please so there were studies which looked at immunotherapy in the triple negative breast cancer in the metastatic setting it was initially done in late line settings where you talked about treating in the third line setting and you saw the response rate was only 5% but but you as you move the treatment up the ladder I, when it was used as a first line therapy the response rate went up to 25% so that's one thing unique about triple negative breast cancer in immunotherapy we keep saying if you're using immunotherapy it has to be up the ladder if you use it later there is possibly by the multiple cycles of chemo you use there is an immune exhaustion which takes place and if the t cells gets exhausted then you may not get an immune response and that's why or uh, possibly we were not getting very good responses when we were using it as second line and third line therapy but when immunotherapy moved up the ladder the response rate went up much higher from 5% to 25% and also we started seeing that these responses could be very durable so with this background and this biological understanding i am passion 130 was the phase 3 trial which was designed looking at a phase 3 data of using immunotherapy in the first line setting next please so what in i am passion 130 was it was a a big phase 3 trial looking at combination of placebo with nap paclitaxel versus nap paclitaxel plus etezolizumab and this is in the triple negative first line population now as a trial it took up all patients in the triple negative setting and these are patients who had not received any kind of a chemotherapy for the metastatic setting and they could have received some chemo but it was had to be given more than 12 months before for the adjuvant setting now Uh, th this trial had certain stratification factors and they were liver metastases prior taxane use and one very important point was the pdl1 expression status now in this trial because we are using etezolizumab mark you the pdl1 is being done by sp142 sa that's the ventana sa where we look at tc and ic in other cancers but what we learned in breast cancer the tc the tumor cell expression is not very important it's the immune cell expression which is very important so the ic greater than 1% positive for triple negative breast cancer is considered pdl1 positive so any ic greater than 1% is pdl1 positive and there was a stratification for pdl1 positive versus negative now mark you the dose of uh, nap paclitaxel here was 100 mg meter square day 1 815 repeated every 28 days and etezolizumab 
was was kind of converted to a dose of 840 mg fixed dose on day 1 and 15 this was to kind of align the uh, the, the immunotherapy with the chemotherapy regime the co co primary endpoints were pfs looking at the whole population and then looking at the pdl1 population and then the overall survival looking at the intent to treat population and the overall survival uh, population uh, and the pdl1 population next please so this was uh, the hierarchical analysis in the im passion 130 now this is very important because when we read into the im passion 130 we will hear a lot of of a lot of talks about it and a lot of uh, pros and cons and criticisms and this was one of the main uh, intention of how to look at the data a hierarchical analysis for this was planned that you would first look at the pfs in the whole population and then the pdl1 population if that was positive then you would look at the overall survival in the whole population that's the intent to treat population and if that is positive then you would look at the overall survival in the pdl1 population next please this is the patient disposition uh, kind of just one point about this slide was pdl1 positive was seen in 40% of patients out of the total population by the sp142 so all 40% of patients are ic at least 1 plus and the second point was at least 60% of patients had received prior chemotherapy it could either be a taxane or an anthracycline but there were 60% patients with prior taxane exposure prior chemotherapy exposure in the adjuvant setting So forty percent patients were de novo metastatic. Next, please. This is the primary results which we saw initially in two thousand eighteen. Oh, sorry, this is the final analysis. What it showed was the PFS in the intent to treat population improved from five point five months to seven point two months. So this was clearly significant. The hazards you can see the p value there, and the hazards are point eight. Now because this was positive, you look at the PDL one. of positive population and if you see the pfs one in the pdl1 population again 5 months to 7.5 months statistically significant with a hazard of 0.6 next please so if you look at the subgroups we see the benefit was seen in all the subgroups but you kind of kind of start seeing the difference there in the pdl1 positive population there's a clear significant improvement of pfs and in the pdl1 negative population you do not see that benefit next please the response rates went up uh, though it was only numerically it went up but you got 10% crs with using immunotherapy in the pdl1 population next please so with this we come to uh, next please with this we come to the the uh, this was updated overall pfs data which we saw uh, this year uh, pfs in the intent to treat population is significant but we clearly see that difference in P pfs in the pdl1 population is significant in the pdl1 negative population we are not seeing a big difference next please this was the final overall survival analysis we saw this data uh, we saw last year uh, uh, there was an update and this year we saw the final overall analysis presented now here's the the point about this trial the overall survival in the intent to treat population was numerically higher but it did not meet statistical significance now because it did not meet statistical significance a formal analysis of the pd of the overall survival in the pdl1 population could not be done but an informal analysis was done and what the informal analysis clearly showed was in the pdl1 positive population the overall survival improved by at least about 7 months so so if you put in the hazards it's clearly significant but it could not be analyzed formally also what we saw in the pdl1 negative population there was really no benefit in the overall survival so in the right side if you look at the curves of the os in the pdl1 positive and negative population you see a clear separation in the pdl1 positive uh, population and in the pdl1 negative population in the middle you see both the curves sticking together that's the pdl1 negative population where we saw no difference at all so what we are seeing there's a clear improvement in the overall survival in the pdl1 population but this was a informal analysis because of the hierarchical design next please uh this was uh, the the os subgroups again we see the same thing we have a clear benefit in the pdl1 positive population the ic greater than 1% and in the less than 1% there was no major benefit of adding immunotherapy the rest of the subgroups again clearly showed there is a benefit even if your patients had been exposed prior to chemotherapy or not 
Next please. Next please. Um, just a minute. Just a previous slide, please. This is a this is a recent analysis of trying to look at uh, exposure of the number of cycles patients received, and this is becoming very important to discuss because what will happen slowly is we have seen the next trial, the the the, the, the paclitaxel etazo combination, and we know that's a negative trial. So we kind of looked at what are the differences. So this is one of the differences. The one difference I mentioned earlier. In this trial, 40% patients were treatment naive. So 60% were chemo exposed. And the second difference was here, in this trial, the number of cycles which were exposed was what was being looked at also. Uh, so you, you actually looked at patients in the etizo, etizo arm got seven cycles of chemotherapy, with, uh, which was more than the patients with the nap paclitaxel alone. And this is different from the, from the trial when you read the IM Passion 131 data, which is looking at paclitaxel. Next, please. Overall safety, uh, again, clearly what we learned from here is the safety is exactly the same. There's slightly increase in the numbers of uh, this, the, the overall uh, adverse events. But what we clearly saw, all the side effects which were happening were due to the chemotherapy. So it was basically the nap paclitaxel chemotherapy side effects in both the arms. It was not that the immunotherapy was really adding any major side effect in them. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, the, th these were the side effects. Again, you clearly can see visually that the side effects were almost the same uh, in both the arms. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, there was one another point I would like to make was immunotherapy-related adverse events, which we always talk about. Now, we, we, we kind of uh, keep worrying about IRAs developing in, with, with, when we add immunotherapy to this. Uh, chemotherapy arm. But what this trial clearly showed, the immunotherapy side effects were really not at all significantly higher. We did see a little more hypothyroidism, but then again, there was no discontinuation for that. You hardly saw any more in increase in hepatitis and pneumonitis. There were no grade three events in at all. And the IRAs were exactly the same. So so, so we, we, we did not have any worry of adding immunotherapy to the nap paclitax alarm. So to summarize, I am Passion 131 was the first phase three study to demonstrate a benefit in combination to first line chemotherapy. Mark you, the chemotherapy has to be etiso plus nap paclitaxel. Um, and this is the first therapy to cross the two year landmark OS benefit in the PDL1 positive population. The overall response rates were also higher in the PDL1 positive population, and including there were at least 10% complete responses which were seen in that arm. Um, what we see. In the PDL1 positive population, we are seeing that the overall survival benefits are consistent. What we saw in the first interim analysis, what we saw in the second interim analysis last year, and what we saw in the final analysis, which were shown in the ESMO this year. The hazard ratio was clearly 0.67. And though, though we keep saying it was not allowed to be analyzed, it is an informal analysis, but what we clearly see, there is a, there is a significant impact in the final overall analysis, that is a median follow-up of 18.8 months, the OS difference in the inter uh, uh, did not cross significance. So we know we cannot just offer it to all our patients saying this is a good drug. It is only the magnitude of benefit in the overall pdl one positive population is where we see the significant benefit. And there was a 7.5 month benefit, which in clinical practice is absolutely significant. I think a 7.5 benefit makes a big difference uh, to this uh, to, these, to this group of patients when you have limited options of treatment. And there were no new safety signals uh, in this trial. Uh, and this has kind of made it a good drug for clinical usage in our first-line patients. Uh, we, have, we have all adapted to doing PDL one positive by SP142 in all our triple negative metastatic breast cancer patients. And yes, in our first-line setting, we offer this to our patients. There's a lot of debate after the new data set which has come from the IMPIA 131 about paclitaxel not being significant, but we, we, we kind of understand the differences that they were, they were, there was more Dexona exposure, more steroid exposure because of the paclitaxel and the, 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 the data sets of the patients were slightly different. So for us, this is clearly an impactful uh, clinical trial with, 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 with applicability in clinical practice. And we have started using it in our patients if we get a SP142 IC positivity. With this, I thank you, everyone. I thank you for this opportunity.